On today's show, why cellulosic ethanol isn't being produced in large amounts, BMW's new i5 will be powered by a fuel cell, and weak small car sales force Ford to lay off workers. All that and more coming right up on AutoLine Daily. This is AutoLine Daily for April 24th, 2015. I'm Drew Winter from Wards Auto, sitting in today, and I'll have news on a big event coming up towards the end of today's show, so stay tuned for that. But right now, here's today's news. You may have heard rumors of a sedan being added to the BMW i lineup, most likely called the i5. On yesterday's AutoLine After Hours, guest Sandy Monroe of Monroe & Associates gave those rumors more credibility. While some have speculated the car would have a plug-in hybrid powertrain, Monroe says the i5 will come with a fuel cell, citing the recent collaboration between Toyota and BMW. As a trade-off, the Japanese automaker will be given the underpinnings to the new Z4. And if you haven't already, we highly recommend you watch that show because this is just one of the many gems that came from it. Sales of the Ford Focus and C-Max Hybrid were way down last month. The Focus was down nearly 15% and the C-Max fell 23%. As a result, Ford is cutting a shift and laying off 700 workers at its Wayne assembly plant where those models are built. Not only are sales down, inventory levels are piling up. The C-Max is at 92 days supply and earlier this month AutoLine noticed that the company is parking hundreds of brand new Focus models miles away from the Wayne plant. I want to take a couple seconds here to ask your help. AutoLine launched its AutoTunes project about a month ago. As some of you know, it's a weekly post about some of the most interesting and obscure transportation-related songs over the past 50 years, such as this week's selection, 99 Miles from L.A. by Art Garfunkel. We'd like to know what you think of AutoTunes itself. Do you like it in its current state? Please send your reactions and or suggestions to viewer mail at autoline.tv, and we'll see what tune you're all singing about AutoTunes. And we'll be right back. Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Borg Warner. Feel good about driving. Bridgestone Tires. Your journey, our passion. And by Dow Automotive Systems. Breakthrough technologies for lightweight vehicles. The average age of a car in the U.S. is around 11 years, which means it's not equipped with the latest technology. But instead of buying a new car to get those features, here's a more affordable solution. Garmin, the maker of portable navigation devices, just introduced the new VCAM, which comes with a built-in dash cam and driver assistance features like forward collision and lane departure warnings. The high-def dash cam continuously records on a micro SD card that's included, and if you're in a crash, it will automatically save files upon impact. The new VCAM goes on sale this May and retails for $400. Last night at the SAE World Congress, Frank Paluk, the head of Honda R&D Americas, laid out the company's vision for future mobility. He said Elon Musk's idea for a Hyperloop is interesting, but suggested that autonomous cars driving at 300 kilometers an hour on dedicated highway lanes makes more sense. He said that unlike the Hyperloop, this would provide point-to-point -point mobility, and it could slash traveling from Los Angeles to San Francisco to only two hours instead of today's six hours. Frank Palouk said all the nice things about the auto industry reducing its carbon footprint and getting to zero accidents, but when you start talking about driving 180 miles an hour, we're ready to start today. Cellulosic ethanol, made from non-food sources, was supposed to be the answer for renewable fuels. So where the heck is it? That's coming up next. Hey! hey. Did you have a good nap? The Firestone Destination LE2. Tough enough to handle anything the road throws at you. Oops. And you throw at it. Durable, dependable Firestone tires. Whatever you drive, drive a Firestone. The fastest way to reduce carbon dioxide emissions is to reduce the amount of carbon in fuel. Adding cellulosic ethanol to gasoline is one way to do that, but it never caught on. On AutoLine this week, the special guest is Margot Oge, who's a former director of the EPA and the author of the new book, Driving the Future. 
In the following clip, Margot explains why cellulosic ethanol isn't being produced in large amounts. What happened in 2007 when Congress passed the 2007 Energy Act and President Bush signed it into law, the, the Congress vision, uh, a pretty aggressive penetration of cellulosic fuels. And they, you know, I believe that a year ago, the level was like a billion gallons, and I don't believe we had any commercial uh, cellulosic. I think this may be the first year there's going to be maybe 30 million gallons, a very small volume. So the, con the Congress thought that the innovation is going to happen sooner than it happened. Uh, I am a pretty big uh, supporter of cellulosics. I think it's a matter of time and also funding. Funding, because many companies have gone under both government funding and private sector funding to continue to see the growth of cellulosic. Because at the end of the day, yes, you can make ethanol from corn in a way that is more sustainable. You can use natural gas or alternative means of, uh, of energy to produce ethanol. But your best way for low carbon fuels is to have a feedstock that doesn't comp compete with food, which is you know, the cellulosic feedstocks. So I believe that, that we're going to see uh, the growth of the cellulosic industry, but not as fast as Congress anticipated, because it wasn't, you know, it wasn't fair to assume that the law passed in 2007, you know, by three, four years, you're going to have a billion gallons of an industry that was not existing. You can watch that entire episode right now on Autoline.tv. And just a word on an upcoming event before we go today. If you're involved with vehicle interiors, you won't want to miss our Wards Auto Interiors Conference on May 13th in the newly renovated Kobo Center. We've got a great roster of speakers, including our keynotes from Moray Callum of Ford and Mark Gerard from BMW's Design Works. You'll get to check out Ward's 10 Best Interiors winning vehicles on display, see supplier technology exhibits, and sit in on your choice of nine panels covering everything from the HMI to luxury to innovative materials. Seating is limited, so visit autointeriors.com now to reserve your spot. That wraps up today's show. Thanks for watching. And have a great weekend. Wards is the industry leader for news, data, and analysis. That's why companies across the globe subscribe to our premium service, maybe even your own. Log in for subscriber access now. Check your company's intranet for details. And rely on wardsauto.com to keep you informed.